Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the build of the MR Aero Designs Pilatus PC6 Turbo Porter. We're making some good progress on this plane like always. And I think uh, after that last video of this removable stab, I am ready to move on to some other steps. So guys, let's roll that intro and we'll get into this video. So just quickly before we move on guys, I just wanna throw out there, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. When you do hit the subscribe button, make sure the bell's clicked off so you get notified when I release new videos. A lot of people say, hey, I didn't get notified about your last video and that's because they don't have the bell turned on. So do that and it'll make your life a lot more simple. All right, folks, so a couple things that I just wanna to touch on here first. Um, there was a comment in the last video about this blind not, not being sunk in all the way. Now there's a reason I didn't sink it in all the way and I will tell you exactly why. So when I drilled this, I drilled it with a drill bit that just was the right size for the bolt going through there to hold it on. So that drill hole goes all the way through and what that ensures is that there's no play in the horizontal stab side to side. Now, if we drill that hole too big, there's a chance that there could be play side to side that could um, develop. Now, probably not because we've got it all bolted together, but that's the reason for it. And then because I don't really have access to the bottom side, I couldn't make that hole bigger um, and keep it nice and, and square from the bottom side. So all I did was without the, the stab on, I put a bolt through there, sucked that down a lot with a big washer on there. And this is a this is one of the larger size blind nuts, so it is absolutely stuck in there. But we're gonna go back and we are going to fill in around that with high saw, so it is not gonna be going anywhere. But that's the reason I did it, just to keep everything nice and tight and aligned. Because if you remember in the last video, I needed to twist this thing and then drill it. So that's why I did it that way. And I think it's gonna work just beautifully. Uh, you may have noticed in the last video, we got a bit of damage here. Um, I don't know how that happened. I just nicked it and that came off. Not a big deal. Don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. We just cut it off, put a new piece of balsa in there, flatten it down, easy fix. But I, uh, you know, if that kind of stuff happens to you guys' builds, don't stress about it. It's not a big deal. Uh, you don't need to order a whole new elevator kit or anything like that, but um, that's where we're starting guys. So I'm gonna get a little bit figured out on this tail section and then I will show you guys where we're at. All right guys, so our final reinforcement here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these vertical pieces. They're gonna go in between the ribs of the stab and the center rib. So those are gonna come down like that. So we're gonna glue all that in place. So that's number one, what we're gonna do. And number two, the primary thing here is we're gonna use 330 seconds ply just on this top section like this. Now, a couple reasons for that. Um, probably the primary reason in my mind is you know, you're taking the stab on and off. If you do this in balsa, it's probably gonna get damaged. That's the first thing. And the second reason from the back here, when we put this on, okay, it's gonna be sitting out about here. So sitting out about there. And that's obviously gonna add some more support. So we've cut our angles so they're gonna match this piece perfectly. So that's gonna be, I think, a phenomenal final reinforcement for the back end. We've, what I did to, to cut these things out is I just took some paper, held it up, got all my measurements and everything, and basically just made templates, right? So we got a left and a right. The right needed to be a little bit longer. And so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna get this all glued into place and clamped into place. And that's gonna be our final 
reinforcement for the rear end. And then this bottom section, we're probably just gonna use uh, balsa on that bottom section. And that'll just go from the rib down to tie into this area. So when the stab is off, that's pretty much what it's, what it's gonna look like. So this also gives us options right here. We can cut that down as well to be level with the rest of the fuselage or we can leave it up. It's all hidden when the, the stab's on anyways. And then we will sand down the back end here when we are all done. And the other thing we're gonna do is we'll sand down this back area here to match um, the curve in the, the actual airframe. So the process of what I did here is I put the verticals on first, got them glued into place. Then I put the horizontal stab on, bolted it in place. I got it again, tightened up just to make sure that this is where it needs to be. And then now we've put the side plates on, which I've done in 332nd ply, and we have glued them into place with high sol. So that needs to cure overnight. And we've got it clamped nicely so it is also following the angle of the rear section here too. So that should work just beautifully. And then once this glue is cured, we can go in there and touch up any areas that need to have extra glue on it. But I think I got it pretty stinking good just looking on the inside here. So. That is awesome. That's pretty much all wrapped up there and happy with that. All right, guys, it is the next day. We've got the tail section all cured now with the ply plates, the reinforcement, and we are a heck of a lot more solid now. So that ply that we added on both sides stiffened up the twisting motion of the horizontal stab. And now our position our measurement from the leading edge to the wing tube and leading edge to the wing tube is exactly the same. So we're, we're good. We've got our final position figured out. We're gonna have to do some sanding here, but essentially that part is done. So I was gonna glue the firewall on last night and decided against it because I wanted a second set of eyes. So Russell came over. Thank you, Russell, you're amazing. And uh, he, he gave me a second set of eyes just to double check everything here and make sure that we're on the right track. So a couple things with this kit and the turbine mount is you need three degrees of down, negative, and two degrees to the right of thrust. So in order to get that and still have decent contact with everything, like the top rib here, you need to do some sanding down on the lower sections in order to get that whole firewall or F1 former inset more before you adjust it. So I did that last night, kind of got it all positioned, but I'll tell you kind of briefly how I got to this point. So fuselage is on the table. Again, a plug for magnet table. We've got magnets inserted everywhere and that helps hold the fuselage in place. So the fuselage is not moving anywhere. You can see the magnets all down the side there. So fuselage is stuck. And then we take our straight edge, our level, and we run that on the side of the fuselage on both sides, transfer the marks to the front. So now we've got our square marks for our fuselage. And then we took our square and we drew a square line across from line to line. So now we've got our zero and then we added our two degrees like that. And we drew our second line that we need to line up to. So that's our thrust angle, two degrees. And then what we can do is we can take our little angle finder thing here and we can check against the prop washer and do our three degrees of down. So. That's where we're at. We are good to glue now. Everything looks like it's in the right place. This all has to come out again, so it doesn't really matter if we touch it or mess up with it. We're gonna put some high sole in all this area and get it reset to where it needs to go and wait for the glue to dry. All right, guys, I think we got everything lined up. Don't breathe on the screen. Don't breathe, don't breathe. I don't need anything to move. 
Okay, this is gonna be hard to show you on camera, but I'll do my best, so. Anyways, when you do this, you're just looking down the line. Yes, it probably doesn't look level to you, but anyways, our angle there is set. And then our angle there is set. So another plug for the magnetic table, man, I need to start selling these magnetic tables. Um, you can hold stuff in place, right? It's just amazing. So, but, uh, so we've got all of our angles set. What I did was used um, 20 minute high saw, the label's gone. So this is the two to one stuff um, that you, I think sets in about 20 minutes, but it's 29314 is the part number. Anyways, that's what I used on this because I don't want to wait till tomorrow to have this stuck in place and be scared that this is going to move. So that is the reason I didn't use the 9462. All right, guys, there is a shot of the rear end with the horizontal stab off. And I tell you, this is absolutely incredible how stiff this is. So before this plywood was installed, there was still a little bit of flex in this midpoint here. Uh, where the pieces um, have to be spaced out so the everything can interlock. But now with this uh, ply installed on the side, it's incredible how stiff this is. So really, really happy with the outcome of, of this whole entire system. Um, again, I've talked about this previously, but all the, all the force with the horizontal stab is on the two pins, the, the stainless steel pins. And then the one bolt is is plenty to hold everything together. So, um, so really, really happy with this. The only final finishing detail I think that I'm gonna do is just matching the angle there to the rest of the, the back end, just so it ties in nicely. And I might sand this area down a little bit not 100% sure on that. You can't see it when it's all assembled. So um, anyways, we'll see what, what happens with that. So really, really happy with the back end. That worked out great. So regarding the front former and the turbine mount and everything, we are set exactly where we need to be. So we're two degrees this way, three degrees of down, and really happy with the way that turned out. Uh, Russell, thank you for your help and thank you for your second set of eyes just to uh, confirm that everything was where it needs to go. So um, so initially, guys, I used high saw, the 20-minute stuff, as I talked about, to, to glue this into place. Um, I, I let it sit for quite a long time yesterday just to make sure that I was happy with it. And then what I do afterwards is just go back and just touch up any of the corners. It's gonna be hard to see, but any of the corners and stuff that uh, didn't have a lot of adhesive. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go back as I mix high sol and, and touch those areas up. So that's a little bit of a tip time for you guys. Another tip time is um, I always kind of leave uh, one or two things to install high saw on, whether it's a blind nut or something like that. And the reason I do that is so I don't waste any high saw that I mix up. So what I mean by that specifically is if I mix high saw up to glue a piece of wood in, there's always usually a little bit left over. So what I'll do is I, I know that I need to glue this or I need to put a bit, little bit of glue there. So then I use all of the all the material that I'm mixing and I'm not wasting any because it's expensive stuff. So little tip time for you guys. If you can, always leave a little bit of something to glue with the extra glue you mix up. Okay, so later last night, I went ahead and installed all of the balsa ribs on here so that was pretty straightforward didn't video any of that there was a couple missing in not missing but just not installed yet in this area here and also on the bottom as well too so i got all that installed and that helps to obviously um complete the front end and and make that ready to uh to go ahead with so moving to the bottom side again installed these things and it's areas like this that Where's bent screwdriver? There's bent screwdriver. It's gonna be a sad day in my life when bent screwdriver gets lost or breaks. I'm gonna be quite upset. Um, it's areas like this that I was talking about with the extra high saw. So, you know, if I mix them up, areas like this that I'll, uh, I'll focus on putting some, some more in when I've got it. So anyways, this is, um, is touched up as well too or or finished and then you'll see the float mounts there i was just playing with uh getting 
everything set up for the float mounts and kind of figuring that step out. So I uh, also drilled a hole in here in the F1 former, need to do another one on that side. So that's a one and three eighths Forstner bit is what I used to drill that. This guy right there. And uh, that uh, is gonna be our, one of our primary air supplies for the turbine. And also yesterday I was talking with Russell uh, who's got lots of experience with pylon racers and cowls and things like that on some of the the air splitting things that we might be doing in this front end of this plane. So have some ideas with that. Anyways, guys, the next thing that I'm I'm kind of focusing on here is the float mounts. Now with the float mounts, we've got them marked out here. So number one, number two, and number three three and then the matching thing on the other side now number three i've already pulled this rib out but number three this is just a balsa rib so we this is definitely not going to be strong enough just to glue it in place so what i've done is i've removed this balsa rib it's sitting over there on the plans we've got the plan laid out so we can also cut some replacement ribs which is what I'm going to do and I'm going to install replacement ribs in this area and we have to reinforce that uh, that float mount in this area so we've got some more structure so that's kind of the one of the next things I'm working on and I'm also going to install 330 seconds ply underneath the landing gear stuff again so when our sheeting butts into it everything's matched and supported because you cannot well you could but you shouldn't install support structure over top of balsa because then it'll just get crushed and deformed. So that's some of the next things I'm working on and just small little things but important things. All right so second hole has been drilled and then I've also made a template for the rear section for the float mounts. So this is kind of my normal process basically just obviously cut it out make a, a template just out of kind of thicker paper and then we can make a bunch of plywood uh, pieces that will fit in the fuselage. So now this section of the assembly or build of the plane kind of brings up a good point that some people have asked me to talk about. So what that is is how do I decide what adhesives to use at what point in the build? So great question. Thank you for asking that. So there, there's quite a few obviously adhesives or glues that I would use during the build and that you guys have seen me use so far. So let's cover some of them and why and where I would use them. All right, so first and kind of probably the most boring is just standard wood glue, uh, white glue, things like that. Now, when I've got an area like the tail section on this plane, the front part of the reinforcement for the tail section that I did when I first um, that I did in the first part of the horizontal stab video, all that wood that I put in the front section of that rear portion was done with wood glue. So when you've got wood against wood, the wood glue is going to work great. Um, the only thing is it takes a while to cure, right? So that's something to think about you know, gluing sheeting on and uh, ribs and things like that. Not something I would normally use unless I have time and it and it stays where it's supposed to be on its own. So that kind of brings in the other adhesives, the aero epoxies if you want. Uh, 9462 high saw, that's the most common one that I use. Um, I also use the E00NS one as well, quite a bit. And the uh, third option that I've started using over the past couple of years is West Systems 610. So all these are great options. Um, the 610 and the 9462 from, uh, from Loctite or Hysol. Those options are probably the ones I would use on every critical joint. So the Hysols I used when I was gluing in the front engine former. That's what I used, high saw. So any really critical joint, I'm going to use high saw on. Uh, the tail section, the rear part of the tail section, when I glued all those pieces of wood in, those were all done with high saw. The vertical pieces, this sheeting on the outside, that was all high saw. This is the area I did with wood glue. 
Now on that rear section, I probably could have used wood glue, would have been fine, but uh, I like to use high saw when it's anything absolutely critical. Um, the reason I would use the 00NS, that is a, that's the five minute stuff. And just a, a, a note, on the firewall, I used my own 20 minute stuff. Um, just because I don't want to, I didn't want to wait 24 hours having everything jigged up, uh, kind of sketchily if you want to say that, and I didn't want to have to worry about it moving. So that's why I used the 20 minute stuff so in a couple hours while I was in the garage it would cure. But the, uh, the five minute stuff, it's not very workable so if I'm gluing something on the inside of the fuselage that's going to be hidden and I don't have to sand it or anything, then I'll use the five minute stuff. Like if I'm doing my, my equipment plates, the five minute stuff's great. I'll use the long term, long curing 9462 if, I've, you know, if I'm gonna glue it and then come back the next day. So options with, with regards to that stuff. Uh, CA obviously, medium, thick, thin. There's lots of different options for CA and kicker, use that a lot. Uh, CA basically, I'm, I'm using that when you've gotta keep things progressing, right? So when you're sheeting the wings, when you're sheeting the fuselage, I'm generally gonna use CA for most scenarios unless we're putting plywood on because it's quick. So we can get things progressing and moving and things like that. So that's kind of the, the ins and outs of the, the different adhesives I use. I don't generally use a lot of standard epoxies, so non-thickened epoxies. Um, I'll use this obviously if I'm dealing with fiberglass work, but um, the only time I would use stuff like this on the exterior of the plane is when I'd mix it with micro balloons so it's sandable. Um, I'm gonna use this stuff or the something similar to this when I am reinforcing the firewall connection. So I'm gonna be putting fiberglass on all these joints and in that case, we're gonna be using uh, standard epoxy. So. That's kind of my mentality behind everything. Um, oh, all the, the, the other one is Gorilla Glue. Um, I haven't really used this a ton over the past 10 years. I only recently started using it. And then the reason for this is it expands. So if you watch the Aviation Design Diamond build, I use this when I put the wood dowel inside of the wing tube. And the nice thing about the Gorilla Glue, probably the nicest thing is it expands when or with moisture. So if you're gonna glue something like a, like a Robart pin as an example, you'd wanna get the hole wet uh, with water first, put some Gorilla Glue in there, and then put the Robart pin in. You only, uh, only need to get wet one side, so it's usually the porous side if there is one, and then as it cures, as you've seen on the wing tubes and stuff with this uh, PC6 build, it expands. So it's a polyurethane glue, moisture cure, reacts with moisture. The one thing about the Gorilla Glue container is you wanna get the air out when you close this. So don't just leave the, the container normal and put the cap on because you've got moist, moist air in there. So try and get as much of the air out as possible and then put the cap on. That's kind of an important, uh, important step. Um, canopies, I'll sometimes use hot glue uh, to get it tacked, but usually for canopies I'm using Formula 560 canopy, canopy glue. Uh, great stuff, best stuff out there. And when I glue canopies and, and clear things, I'm using magnets. We love magnets on the channel. So that's kind of my, my ins and outs of adhesive, guys. Uh, if there's anything else you wanna ask me or any other questions regarding adhesives, um, I don't think I've forgotten anything that I use. I'm just looking at my, my table here. Uh, that's kind of the gist of it. All right, guys, got my pieces all cut out. So I gotta do a couple things here. First of all, we gotta get rid of the, uh, the glue and the little uh, leftover rib piece right there. So that's number one, I'm just gonna Dremel that out. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do now while we're gluing stuff and everything out is we're gonna take this little triangle, uh, balsa triangle out on the engine mounts on both sides. So again, I'm just gonna use my Dremel and vacuum and get rid of that. So we're gonna put a piece of ply in here instead of this triangle and high saw all that. So we've got uh, more better reinforcement and more contact area. And that's the plan. All right guys, the balsa angle that was in there is removed on both sides and I've made some triangles out of quarter inch ply. Now, just a little trick here is you don't need to sand or grind out the glue that's already there. Just bevel or angle your 
um, piece that you're gluing in. So we're gonna glue this in on both sides, clamp them. Now, because this is a critical joint, we're using 9462 high sole. And again, whatever I don't use, I'm just going to fill in and you know finish gluing up some of the other joints that need some adhesive. So next step, glue those things in place. All right, so it's the next day. This is all cured, our plates that we glued on the bottom of the engine mounts and everything is crazy rigid there now. Uh, that worked out really good. Next thing we're working on is the float mounts. So um, what I did yesterday is I glued these pieces in just with wood glue on the bottom section. So the reason I used wood glue is because this is balsa and good contact surface on the bottom. What I'm gonna do is glue the sides with high sol, and then the entire engine mount is gonna be glued with high sol. So, so you can see on the other side here, the front one is, is in place and glued. The back one is loose. So one thing with these float mounts is they're designed all the same, but we wanna make sure we run a rod all the way through, so that way they're lined up. Uh, this is a old fly bar rod from a 700 series nitro helicopter that I had floating around. I also have a carbon dowel that would fit through there as well too but the rod is a little bit more stiff so but uh, basically when these are all set in place in the right spot uh, the position in the fuselage doesn't really matter so much what matters more is that the rod is free and there's no binding so you what I'm going to do is glue each one of these in, put the rod through, and uh, just make sure they're in a decent position and they're not going to bind like crazy. So, the thing I'm going to be working on here is the plywood that goes underneath all the mounting stuff on the bottom of the fuselage. So, we've got the uh, this area here, which has our wing strut mounts and also part of the gear mount. So, I'm just going to do one nice strip all the way across. So, that's going to work out good and that's just 3 30 second ply and then i'm going to cut another piece here that's going to go over top of the front gear mount area and so i'm also doing that while i'm doing the gear mounts all right guys float mounts are all installed so these are currently glued in place with high sol i used tons of high sol to get these uh, glued in place because you've got so many different contact surfaces the bottom the sides now one little trick for you is once you're happy with the position on something like this, you really can't clamp this into place because these formers or these ribs are all uh, stuck. So all you gotta do is take a little bit of medium or thick CA, put it on a contact point, use some kicker, and now that CA is holding this in place and the high saws curing. All right, so the plates are all installed under the mounts of everything, so that worked out good. Uh, for this, I just used thick CA and put that in the areas underneath the plywood and screwed everything down and letting that cure. Did the front one here as well too. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do here, guys, is I'm gonna get the back end here sheeted uh, with the funny curves and everything. And the reason I'm doing that is just because I wanna leave that to cure and can't really do anything more up front. So um, what I've done, you can see on this one side here is I've taken my plane and kind of gotten everything shaped and I need to do the same thing on this side. Now we're changing things a little bit from the stock kit because generally you have your tail wheel mounted here. So it's using this entire piece of ply. With our new tail wheel, it everything's behind that line right there, that pencil line. So that changes how we're gonna do this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sheet this all the way onto about here, and then we're just gonna fill in this section so it'll be a nice um, nice finish all the way around. We won't have any of the this plywood exposed except where the tail wheel bolts on. So I'm just getting that taken care of. So just basically sanding these shapes down and everything, getting them uh, positioned nicely, and then we'll go ahead and uh, glue the balsa on. We're probably gonna have to do some, some wetting of the balsa and some shaping of it to try and get it around this curve here, but that's all part of the fun. All right, so because of the curves here, we're gonna do this in multiple pieces, so uh, just showing you guys the progress. So I just 
cut a the piece for the side, uh, wet it wet it down with rubbing alcohol, and got a nice curve to it. So this one's all glued in place. So what I'm going to do now is put the next piece on like this, finish it off, and then we're going to have a balsa section that goes in the center. Something like that is the goal. So. All right, guys, so the tail, I think, worked out wonderfully. We had to do it in multiple pieces here, as I showed you. So the first piece, second piece, and then third piece on top, just to tie everything together. So this is rough done right now. We still have to obviously do lots of sanding and stuff, but uh, looks good. Happy with that. I think it looks absolutely wonderful. All right, guys, well, that's the end of this video. We made some great progress on this plane. So far, the primary thing in this video is getting the engine installed. The former installed, I guess, is the better way to say it. But we made some good progress in this episode. I think we accomplished a lot. So uh, the a lot of the stressful stuff for me is done. And I was telling my wife this earlier, uh, gluing this engine former in, gluing the mount in was a, a huge stress to me. And uh, getting the tail kind of kind of wrapped up and everything was, was a bit of a stress as well too. Not as much as this though. So anyways, things are going to progress nice and quickly from here on out. Now, cool thing. This is just one of the things that got delivered yesterday, but we are going to be painting this plane as well too. So the owner and I have come to an agreement and I'm going to be completing this plane completely start to finish, which is going to be absolutely awesome. So when this plane is done, basically bind the radio to it, do the setup and it will be ready to fly. So good progress on this thing and it's going to be fun doing this thing from start to completion. So I'm glad that worked out. But that's it for this episode, guys. Don't forget to smash that like button, give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And when you do hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. That's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one.